This is Hope. Welcome to my channel, where I aspire to motivate and inspire you by sharing what inspires and motivates me. Here we go, cleaning and making trays. First thing I did was empty out all my trays and wipe everything down and then start resorting by my color families. Overall, the pastels were pretty clean, so I didn't worry about cleaning them off individually. The foam cushions, however, were a very different story and needed a bit of soap and water to get them cleaned out nicely. And then I just run them out really well, rolled them in a paper towel, and hung them up to dry for the rest of the day. And I went through each tray, sorting and reorganizing, and even came up with a, two, a couple of new categories along the way. I don't worry too much about getting these perfectly organized by hue and value. I get them close, just to make them easy enough to find later on. Once those foam pads were dry, everything went back into the trays. Let's build a tray. I've got most of my supplies out here. I used a fine tip Sharpie, use whatever you got, some dust tape, packing tape would work better, scissors, and then I've got a cereal box there. What kind of I got? Oh, it's a, like a rice checks kind of thing. So whatever cereal box you got. Oh, and also I've got a piece of uh, pizza box cardboard. So it's a little stiffer and that makes a nice bottom. First thing I do is measure out just kind of around the bottom of that tray, coming in really as close as I can all the way around. This is probably optional, but I grabbed a ruler and straightened out the lines that I made. Once I was happy with those lines, I grabbed my scissors and cut it out. Now is a good time to grab the tray and check the fit. Trim it up if you need to. If not, let's move on to cutting the sides. I'm sorry to say you may have to do a little math here in measuring the depth of your holder and dividing it by two. Uh, since I already had trays, I just took one of mine and measured and they are one and one eighth inches deep on the sides. I took that measurement and drew out several strips along the narrow side of my cereal box. You could use your scissors to cut out those strips, but I like to use a straight blade and a ruler to do that. It just makes it a little faster and easier and the sides look definitely straighter. I was able to get three strips out of that narrow side of the cereal box and that was plenty to go around my tray. Next step, grab your tape and tape them together. I do on each overlapping the ends and then a little tape on each side. This next step is just a little on the fiddly side, so don't be in a hurry is my biggest suggestion. Take your time and get pieces, you know, strips of tape long ways on there, start in the middle-ish to one end of a side, not a corner, and start flat. Get that first leading edge on there before you get to the corner. Here we are, getting ready to go in that first corner. Just gently bend it, match it as close as you can. Grab a piece of tape. I like to put it on the bottom first, bend that edge around, and then bring the tape up to it. Now that both ends of the curve are secured, I'll go back and put another piece of tape in the middle. And I keep put tape, placing tape around. I'm not covering that edge completely, just anchoring enough for it to hold on. Now 
now that we've got that basic tray complete, let's add a little more stiffness to the bottom and give a place for those loops. You can see here on the bottom of Pizza Box, I was able to trace out two pieces. So I can do two trays with one Pizza Box. And then it's a matter of cutting them out. I like to use the straight blade for this thicker cardboard as the scissors just don't quite cut it. Once I cut it out, check for fit, and make sure it's good, close enough. It doesn't have to be exact, but nothing glaringly bad. For loops, I'm using 3 8 inch width twill tape. I, I have gray, that's the color I've got, so that's what I've used. And I cut six inch lengths, two for each tray. All right, now back to the tray. Got the cardboard bottom and PVA glue. If you've got Elmer's glue, the white kind or the clear kind, I think either of those would be strong enough. And give yourself a nice coat. And then I fold the strips in half and lay them approximately in the middle using about an inch of contact, if that makes sense, the length. Um, I think I measured it, yeah, that was about an inch. But I didn't necessarily measure it side to side every time. I just eyeballed it, and uh, that was good enough. But I put a little more glue on each of the strips on top of them to make sure that they had good contact with the tray itself. And then put that on top. Give it a bit of a press down. Probably best to do this with, with an empty tray, but hey, you know. And then a little extra glue on the loops where they come into contact with the sides of the tray. And to make sure they stay up, I used a little tape so they stayed in place while they dried. And that's a completed tray. Pop that puppy into your pastel carrier and call it a day. You could wait for it to dry or not. All right, there is cleaning and building a tray. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because in the next video in this series, I will show you how I've made that nifty bag there on the right. This video update was made possible by my patrons on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Please check it out for more information and consider joining one of my teams.